What's up, YouTube? We're back with another episode. What the hell am I doing? Today we're on an explore, Noah and I. Um, it's a bit of a cold, blustery day in Ontario, but nonetheless, we're out here getting stuff done. And uh, we came across something really, really cool. It's this right here. It's an abandoned train caboose. This is uh, an 1800 style caboose. It's all wood. Um, it's a style that they used right around, I believe, until the 1980s when they stopped using cabooses. Um, it's a pretty cool find, I think, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. This is on a property that was once owned by a Canadian author. Um, he has a, quite a large house that's also on this property, and he was a historian and, I believe, a train enthusiast, which would explain this. But let's not blather on about this out here. It's pretty cold. Let's get a closer look and see what's going on inside. Okay, so we're going to start here at what I believe is the front side of the caboose. And I figured I'd take you guys around the property real quick, just so you guys can see what's going on. This thing is located literally in the middle of the woods. But it is actually part of the property that a Canadian author once owned. A very famous Canadian author. And the house is actually somewhat over there. And what's cool, before we go into the train car, I'll let you see this. A little fire pit over here which would have been a cool little spot really and yeah, there it is down here let me take a look yeah there it is it's a cool little chimney would have been a great spot to sit have a little fire maybe even cook stuff but yeah if you look over here there's that train car just buried in the woods Okay, but we'll wander back over here now, and I'll give you guys a better look at what's going on. So the train caboose, obviously it was at the rear end of the train, and its purpose was basically for the conductor and the crew to use it as a, like a sleeping quarters, and an office, and probably even a place to relax and take breaks. Um, and what's cool about this, it's got its own tracks. I mean, they're not long. They're just a little bit longer than the train itself. But when they put this thing here, they actually installed it on tracks. So I can only assume that at one point this was lifted in by crane. And as you get closer, you can see the last time it was inspected was in 83. May 27th, 83. I believe this thing was decommissioned shortly after. And it's probably been sitting out here ever since. I would assume this was put here probably mid 80s, mid to late 80s, and all these trees grew in afterwards. But yeah, even if you look at the back here, you've got your train car connection, you've got uh, some kind of a hydraulic line, or uh, you know, maybe that's, yeah, that's probably hydraulics. But yeah, let's go around the train here and take a closer look at things. So this is obviously one way in. Maybe we'll take this up in a minute. What's cool, you've got these handrails on the side here. I only assume they're curved like that because when the train is moving, it would be easier to grab them and jump up. You got the brakes and the wheels. Now this is crazy. I mean, look at the size of those wheels. They're absolutely massive. even got a leaf spring suspension which is pretty cool if you ask me I mean those are massive leaf springs and they go right across we got some serial numbers and whatnot stamped on here including the main one here if you guys want to look up this train car more than likely you'll be able to find out its history when it was actually commissioned and decommissioned that's what I did with the last one CP rail, CP rail 
437059. And again, you got the other set of brakes here at the rear. And I believe this is the rear because there should be no connection at the back. No, well, no, there is a connection at the back. Still, I believe this is the rear <laughs> of the train car. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. But it's kind of a nice spot here, and if you look around, very secluded, peaceful, quiet area on a beautiful November day. So from this view, you can see the lookout point, which is up top there. And what they would do, the workers would sit up there and they would be able to look out for the train, make sure everything was okay for everything ahead. That's kind of how they monitored the operation as it was running. Let's take a look from this side here. Let's kind of work our way over. But yeah, you got another view of the serial number over here. It's just a real cool piece of Canadian history right here. There's that lookout point. But yeah, she's buried. Okay, let's work our way inside this thing. Let's see what we can find out about inside. Okay, let's work our way in here. Let's see what we got going on right away. We got this. No idea what it's for. Tell me in the comments. I believe this has to do with connecting the trains, but yeah, I don't know. We'll go inside here. Oh, well, she's a pretty one. Okay. Well, this is definitely cool. She's um, a little tidier than the last one we saw, isn't she? When you look over here, we got a couch slash bed. And they've got these lamps, like the hotels, on the walls, which is cool because they move. So move them around in and out of the way. You've got this one here. I'm pretty sure this is a pullout. Yeah. That's a pullout bed. So, you know, if you had a couple of people here, you could pull that out and have a couple of people sleeping. But she's quite cool. Wood paneling walls. Over here, you've got tile on the floor and on the wall because there used to be a fireplace or a, a stove here, which would have been cool back in the day. Obviously that would have kept this thing piping hot without much effort. That would have been very, very cool. Oh, look at this, the stop cable. They still have the stop cable from the train. That's also very neat. We've got a little kitchenette here, paper towel holder with no paper towel in it. What's in here? Cabinet. Oh, there's some napkins and whatnot. Nothing. And a cafe cup. <laughs> That's cool. And, uh, you got your Dixie cup holder there. You got a sink with no running water. What's underneath here? Oh, bricks. Oh, there's bricks. I'm not sure what those are for. I guess they're not too important. And if you go along this side here, you got another one of those lights. You got one of the curtains on the floor. This thing had uh, baseboard heaters. That's kind of cool. I'm sure those were put in after the fact. Or maybe they were there during the operation of the train. I guess that would make sense. And you got a mirror that was up somewhere. Let's work our way deeper. See what's back here. So this is the, the area where the workers would sit. And this would allow them a good view of the train from above. We'll go up there and see what's going on. This door here says oil tank. Um, it's not a whole lot in there now. Definitely no oil tank. The floors are cool. A little bit of hardwood floor in here. Let's see what's in here. Well, there's a vacuum cleaner. A little bit of closet space. That's kind of cool. Look at this. 
Little kitchen helper. This looks like kid stuff. That looks really old too. A little bit of storage. That's very neat. Go back here. This must be a bathroom. Oh yeah. It's a train bathroom. Please do not put paper in the toilet. It has been emptied. It has to be emptied by hand. <laughs> Do not put logs in there either then. But yeah, that's cool. You would use that toilet. You'd pull that lever and it would drop it down into the gray water tank. That's pretty cool. That's old school. I can understand why you would call that an emergency only toilet. And then we got this cool spot here. A little bit of shelving, storage, an electrical panel for the outside lights. And the inside lights and then we got this side here let's see what we got stored in here if anything i'll just go over this side well, that's interesting i'm not sure why that's caged off like that or why that one is oh it's a fridge could that be what this is the doors are even kind of Thick and insulated, so that may very well be like a fridge or some kind of cold storage. And then this is more storage here. Not much to see. And we got bricks in here and an old beer. God knows how old that is. I think we should check it out up here. See what up here looks like. All right, let's check out the crew lookout area and see what it looks like from up here. Well, this is quite a view. I like the way this looks. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so from up here, you got a good look of everything around you, as you can see. If you look out this window here, you got a long view back along the train car, which is cool. And if you go around to all these other windows, same deal. Long view to the side. And as we turn this way, we get a long view directly behind. So this is very cool, a very cool perspective of everything. And this is very important in the train's operation back in the day. This was a four-seater, so I guess there were four members of the crew. And yes. I'm all the way at the top. You've got the ladder there to get down. And you've got the ladder here to get down. Now, I would sit in these chairs. But if you look real close, well, that one's pretty dirty. That one's got, well, you know, crap all over it. And, uh, well, this one's cobwebby, so I think Greg will just keep his pants clean today. Hope you guys don't mind. Not sure what would have went here. That's kind of interesting. I can tell you on this side though, they had a fire extinguisher. At some point a light below it, which is now longer there. No longer there. And of course you got the uh, stop cable, which is up here too. So that's pretty cool. And before I go back down, I just noticed this BC 79 being carved on the window here. You can only assume that Somebody was in BC in 1979, and this window does not open. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap this one up. Just a short one today, but a pretty cool one, if you ask me. It's the second train that we've got to see on this channel, and I think this one was the cooler of the two so far. But, you know, I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. So let me know in the comments if you thought this train or the other one was cooler, and, of course, if you'd like to see more of these types of explorers. But for the meantime... Please make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment after the video, and of course, if you haven't, subscribe to the channel by clicking that one there, check out the previous video, or check out this video up here, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for tuning in.